A very good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to our webinar series. Today, we have Mr. Kama with us with his webinar topic entitled, Sleep is Your Superpower. Mr. Kama currently works as a senior lecturer in the Faculty of Pharmacy at Massa University. He is board certified pharmacotherapy specialist from USA with a degree in pharmacy from the University of Lahore, Pakistan. He completed his residency in Siddiq Sadiq Hospital, Pakistan, and pursued his master's in clinical pharmacy from University of Science Malaysia. With 30 privileged, sorry, with 30 research articles published, Mr. Kamar's expertise are in clinical pharmacy practice, smoking cessation, and public health. So today, we are privileged to hear his expert advice on how sleep deprivation can affect your health. Without further ado, Mr. Kama, the screen is all yours. Thank you, Ms. Jennifer, for your brief and wonderful introduction. And thanks for being a moderator of today's session. Your support and your assistance is highly appreciated. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon to all my viewers. And I hope and pray that everyone is safe and healthy in this COVID pandemic. And first of all, I would like to thank the Faculty of Pharmacy and Management of Massa University for giving me the opportunity to share my views and knowledge about the sleep deprivation and its effects on health. Okay, before proceeding to this session, I will hi highlight that the reason I have selected this topic is because of the COVID pandemic because uh, currently this crisis which has stressed many people so many people are fear and have anxiety about the new disease they are worried about their health and they are worried about their loved ones and some have the worry about their financial situation loss of job loss of support service which they rely on so these all factors contribute to stress and stress if the prevalent it will affect your sleep and if sleep affects it will change in your sleep pattern and if your sleep pattern is disturbed which may lead to the sleep deprivation or and it can also lead to your permanent sleep disorder so in today's session we will see about the world and malaysian sleep statistic and we will be discussing about why we sleep and why i call sleep is your superpower and what is the impact of sleep deprivation on the health so let's begin with so these are the contents which i will be cover here the introduction the worldwide statistic sleep order statistic and covid 19 and sleep the main effect of the sleep deprivation the purpose of sleep the stages of sleep and sleep deprivation is and its effects on the health and how we can improve the sleep and general tips for the health sleep hygiene now is it the poor sleep quality or insomnia is one of the serious public health concerns which may influence the quality of life increase the morbidity and mortality and sleep is a basic human needs every individual they need to to a good it is important for your good health it is important for your well and good quality of life and together with it is also important to perform the well the very next day because when we have the good quality of sleep our mind will be fresh our mind will re revitalize to perform the activity for the next day now we see that worldwide statistic in if we see that in 1942 eight hours of sleep was the norm so every individual they used to have the eight hours of sleep now we see that in the current situation as compared to 2017 on an average 6.8 hours is a normal on an average every individual they sleep only about the 6.8 hours so 40 percent of the adults sleeping less than six hours per night And the data from the sleep cycle, which has shown that none of the country world managed to achieve the eight hours of sleep, meaning that none of any country 
in which the people they used to have the sleep for eight hours. As according to Sleep Foundation, the recommended sleep for the adult is seven to nine hours. Uh, seven to nine hours a night. So this is an alarming situation. That and also worrying the lack of sleep throughout the world. So I have the statistic, the data from the one of the research that if you can see that on my left side, there are the five countries, five countries which are categorized as the worst countries on an average sleep. If you see among that five countries, Japan is the number one in which the people used to have an average sleep of five hours and 59 minutes. So you can say almost six hours and followed by Saudi Arabia, Sweden, India and Philippines. So these are the worst country which having a poor sleep and worst sleepers. On my right side, we can see these are the best five countries which having a good sleep on an average. Now we see among the best countries, number one is New Zealand. The five countries which having a good sleeping and on average the people spend 7.7 7 hours and 30 minutes in their per night sleep which is also within the range of the 7 to 9 7 to 9 but none of the country achieved the 8 hours so not one country out of 48 that participated managed an average of 8 hours of sleep a night now we see the another report from the global relaxation report 2018 so more than the half, the 51% adult worldwide report that they get the less sleep than they need on average night. Meaning that they are spending the less time, recommended time uh, to have the sleep on an average in a night. And 80% of the adults, they say that they use the weekend to make up a sleep. Like if they don't feel, uh, have the enough sleep on the uh, weekdays, they're taking the weekends to make up the sleep. So in that research, we also find that 35% are the regular sleepers. They go sleep around the 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. And 21% the is the early bird. The remaining, the 18% and 26%, they are the insom insomniac and night owl, respectively. So this data is from the 12 countries. This data representation from the 12 countries. And previous data is representing from the 48 countries. Now we see the sleep disorder statistic in Malaysia. In according to National Sleep Survey 2018, the nine out of 10 Malaysians, like 89%, they suffer from one or more sleep problems. And among that, the young adults, they are the highest one, the 63%. So 63% of the young adults, they are more affected and having a sleep problems. And other than that, what are the sleep problems they have highlighted? That they wake up in the middle of the night, 46%. They're tired and untrusted in the morning. They're tired and rushed in the morning, 32%. They feel sleepy and fallen asleep during the day, that is 32%. And 29% reported that they snore. Now, according to Don Costner, who is the head of the president of Sleepwell Association and who is also the associate professor of Stanford University. They said the thing of a sleep problem as infection. Don't ignore that if you are having a sleep sleeping problem, if you're having a sleep disorder, don't ignore that one. You, you have to think that one as a infectious disease because that sleep will affect your many, it will have your effect on your health. Later we'll see that what are the effects. So another common problem which is reported by the Malaysian is that one in a four Malaysian is difficult in falling asleep, 26%. And four in 10 Malaysian, they take more than 30 minutes of fall asleep. According to the National Sleep Foundation, the recommendation is the cutoff value is 30 minutes. If you could not able to sleep for 30 minutes, you should wake up from the bed. So don't try to force and put effort to make you sleep. Because the good sleeper, they don't put efforts to sleep. So 50% of the Malaysian rate their sleep quality as an average. And 35% of Malaysian, they face, they face sleeping problems uh, once or twice a week. 
and 20% of Malaysian face sleeping problem three or four times a day in a week. If we, according to Don Posner, he said that if you can't sleep, do not try to force it. The good sleeper, they don't put effort into the sleep whatsoever. They will not take the much time to sleep. If they have the, they are the good sleeper, they have the good quality of sleep, they will sleep within the 30 minutes. Now we see that according to CDC, the, what is the effect of the COVID-19 and the sleep? The COVID-19 pandemic may have the stressful for many people. So many people are having an anxiety about the worry about their the new disease. They have the emotions like what could what could be the treatment? What will be happen for our children and adults? And they worry about their uh, loved ones. And all this action make the people that such as social distancing. If you want to prevent from this COVID, have a social distancing. So this social distancing make the people isolated and lonely and which can increase the stress and anxiety. And these stress and anxiety, stress during the infection disease outbreak can something cause the falling. So in which there are, you can see that there are so many factors which can cause the stress, but we are more focusing on the changes in sleep pattern and eating pattern. Now we see that according to CDC that sleep is emerging as the latest casualty of the COVID-19 crisis. Because some people they are so much worried about this uh, infection disease and too many sleepless nights can aggravate both the physical and mental health problems. The coronavirus pandemic has turned the world upside down which have affected the all aspect of the, our lives, including our health, livelihoods, and much more. So under this COVID-19 crisis, the many people have undergone the lockdown. And many people have been instructed by the concerned authority of that country that you stay at home. And many of people, they are feeling isolated and, and anxious. So these anxious which will contribute to stress and if it is affecting your sleep. So again, I will highlight that Don, uh, Don Postner that he have highlighted that the current situation, this is the perfect storm of sleep problems, the COVID-19 crisis, COVID-19 pandemic. So this is a storm of a sleep problem. Those who have already having a previously sleep problem, that is a contributing uh, exhibition for them. And those who doesn't have, so this is a storm that they will affect their sleep problems. Now we see that there is a global sense of anxiety at this time. Like everywhere, someone is talking about the news, someone is talking about the, their family members, someone is talking about uh, neighbors, that how many cases they have found, how many cases they have identified in this country, what is the news, how many people dying. So it's made that if it is very hard to escape the overall state of the planet right now. So everywhere the same news in a very uh, same uh, news channel, whether you are, do you want, do you want to prevent from this uh, anxiety? There is a global sense of anxiety is everywhere. So which are in, in, in Britain affecting your sleep. Now we see the main effect of sleep deprivation. It is categorized into three main uh, effects, physical effects, mental health complication, and cognitive impairment. The so physical uh, effects that like if you don't have the enough sleep, it will cause the sleepiness, it will cause you fatigue, and it will cause the cardiovascular disorders such as hypertension and cardiac arrest. It will also cause the metabolic disorder like obesity and diabetes. How about the mental health complication? It will cause the stress, anxiety, and depression. Now there is an interrelated that sleep deprivation can cause the stress, and stress can cause the sleep deprivation. Same cause with anxiety and depression. And if we see the cognitive impairment, the what is the effect on the cognitive impairment? That it will be difficult to have the attention, it will be difficult to have the alertness and concentration 
and difficult to absorb the new knowledge difficult to get the new knowledge in our memory because of the sleep deprivation and there will be increased likelihood of having an accident during the driving so one of the factor of having an accident is also the sleep deprivation now if you can see the picture that now you can see that this is a sleep deprivation and this is a normal sleep so what's the you can see the phase difference what's the difference on the phase because one of the effect of the sleep is also the aging so later i will i will discuss with you but this one i just want to show you the picture one is normal sleep with it look a fresh and one with the sleep deprivation it will look the uh, sleepiness lazy and it will look like a is a very old now we see that what is the sleep and why we do need it sleep is a naturally naturally reoccurring state of mind like it is characterized by altered consciousness and relatively inhibitory sensory activity inhibition like in the sleep condition our all the voluntary muscles and it will reduce the interaction with surrounding or in simple word if i would say that sleep is a natural periodic suspension of consciousness during which the powers of the body are restored the sleep is the in which our whole body is immobilized and our brain is fully active and sleep is a process there there is also saying that sleep we also call as a half dead why is called the half dead because our all the body is paralyzed is in paralyzed doesn't mean that that condition that is immobilized and uh, your brain is fully active in during that process your body uh, powers are restored so what are the powers like during the sleep your immune system will restore your nervous system will restore your skeleton uh, system and muscular system will restore they will regenerate they will uh, revitalize and they will re-energize during the sleep and another purpose of sleep is to maintain the good mood having a good memory and cognitive function if you have the good good sleep very next day you will have the good function to perform the day it will be good to grab the knowledge it will be good to memorize the new things and good to concentrate and alertness now we'll see the stages of sleep so there are the four stages of sleep the stage one sleep we call as a nodding off okay the first three stages we call as a non rem sleep non rapid eye movement and the fourth only the stage four is a rem sleep now we see the what are the different changes happen while you sleep the stage number one we call as a nodding off in this stage this is a transition between the, the wakefulness and sleep and it lasts for 5 to 10 minutes so this is a phase you are having a half conscious and half alertness or a half half sleep so in this phase someone if you get any noise or anything you can wake up the stage number 2 is called as a light sleep in this stage the body temperature drops the heart rate begin to slow the brain begin to produce a sleep spindles which will last about 20 minutes and now then after that stage 2 that our sleep will enter into the stage 3 that is also the non rem sleep we call it as a deep sleep so in this stage our muscles relax the blood pressure and breathing rate drop and it is a deepest sleep occurs so this is a deep deep sleep continue and the stage 4 is a rapid eye movement sleep in this phase our your brain become the more active so your body become relaxed and immobilized and most of the dream which occur in this stage stage number 4 and this is the stage in which you will have the dream you will memorize it you will know the what dream you had the last night other than that if you have the dream in stage 1 2 or 3 you will not memorize what the dream you had it you will just have the clips uh, that you have the dream but you cannot recall what's the dream but if you had the dream in the stage 4 yes you can memorize it and in this in this stage our eye will move rapidly 
That's the reason we call it as a rapid eye movement. The sleep is where your eyes move rapidly and randomly below your eyelids and your become a brain becomes surprisingly active. So our brain is active. This is a phase where all the, the system are restored, immune system, muscular system, skeletal system. So this is one of the reasons I call the sleep is your superpower. So if you have good sleep, these all the system will be regenerate, revitalize and re-energize in a very next day for your next day activity. Now we see that according to National Sleep Foundation, so they have given the recommendation that I'm just high highlighting the young adults and adults. The average recommended sleep they want, they should have is seven to nine hours. If six hours, that is a, a may be appropriate, or ten to eleven is may be appropriate. So more sleep doesn't mean that it will have a more good effect. So that's why if it is recommended to seven to nine hours, so seven to nine hours that is the maximum that is the recommendation in which you will gain all these superpowers energies. Now we see the different age group, different age group, the in newborn, infants, toddler, preschool, they have the different range of sleep. So that the blue one, that is the recommended. So at least we should have that 10 to 19 hours, 9 to 11 hours for the school age, teenagers, 8 to 10 hours. And the older adults, 65 years and above, 7 to 8 hours. That is recommended by the National Sleep Foundation. And what is a sleep deprivation? Sleep deprivation is sleep loss. Meaning that if you are recommended is seven to nine hours. And if you are sleeping less than seven hours, like six hours or five hours, so what will be effect? Any significant loss of sleep resulting in the problems in concentration and irritability. Like what are the symptoms of sleep deprivation? Like trembling hands, inattention, that we cannot uh, have the attention to any of the topic or any of the new memory. Staring off into the space, we're thinking about and looking at here and there. Droopy eyelids and general discomfort. Many people consider that sleep a waste of time and see nothing wrong in sleeping less than six hours. So many people think that uh, is uh, nothing happened when we, if we sleep less than six hours, okay. Maybe the, this problem is a long term problem. Maybe it will not appear in the very, very first day. Like if you doesn't have the sleep, but it will contribute in your internal process, biological process is start affecting your internally. And by the end of the time, like if you continue to have a sleep depression for three months, six months or one year, it will have the many effects. Now we see that sleep loss affect the every system of the body. First, we see the sleep loss and the reproductive system. Men who sleep on average of four to five hours per night have significantly small testicles and testosterone level than age of them 10 years. The, the level of testosterone will be the lower as compared to that people having a 10 years age. This means that the people who uh, you are the young than the, that 10 years but your level will be lower than that 10 years of the person because of you are having a less uh, sleep similar changes is also happening in the female reproductive health and that has been observed now we see the sleep loss and cardiovascular system even the small reduction in the total sleep duration can increase your risk of heart attack so there is also evidence according to CDC and the research have been done that the people who sleep less than five hours of sleep, they double the risk of death from cardiovascular disease. Even only the one night, five hours of sleep, it will increase the risk of the cardiovascular death. So especially for those people who are already having a diagnosed any cardiovascular disease. So in that case, the risk will be more double. And those who doesn't have, so most probably in the future, they can have the cardiovascular disorder. The research shows that 24% increase, 24% uh, increase in heart rate, even in a small reduction of sleep duration. 
and 24% decrease 21% decrease in heart attack which is linked with the extra hour sleep like if you are having here they mentioned five hours if you're having a six hour sleep like one hour extra it will decrease 21 percent again one hour extra seven hours decrease to 21 percent further so the recommended is seven to nine hours now we see the sleep loss and the brain so what is the effect of the sleep loss in our brain the lack of sleep causes a 40% deficit in the ability to learn and create new memories. So our mind will ability of learning the things or creating the new memories will be decreased, 40% decrease. So this is one of the factors which will difference between the acing and failing in an exam. So this is one of the contributing factor that if you're not having a sleep and some students, they are having a less grade and less the score in their exam. Another studies it have been reported that five or few hours of sleep continuously for three days in a row it can damage or kill your brain cells. See only five five hours or less than five hours continuously for three days in a row can damage and kill the brain cell and eventually the brain won't be able to clear out that the plaque forming the protein which will cause the Alzheimer and dementia. To clear that plaque, our brain needs the sharp wave ripples. Brain needs the sharp wave ripples. So when this sharp knee, uh, um, sharp wave ripples are produced, when we are in the stage four, when we are in a deep sleep. So our brain will produce the sharp wave ripples. We call it as a spindles. The, uh, sleep, sp sleep spindles so that will help to remove this protein which are responsible for the Alzheimer and dementia now see according to Matt Walker they say that it is almost as sleep deprivation had shut down your memory inbox like if you're having a sleep deprivation your memory inbox will be shut down like any new incoming files they will bounce back they will be bounced back Maybe during that time you feel you will feel that yes, you are getting the new things, you are getting in the memory. But after that, maybe after half an hour, one hour, you will forget everything. Because you don't have enough sleep, our brain memory box is shut down. It cannot store that new memory and new files, the new memory will be bounced back. So this is proven by the research. Now we see the sleep loss and aging. If you have a sleep deprivation, it will make you look older faster. The one of the most common the sleep deprivation symptom is puffy skin and dark circles under your eyes. So everyone want to have the good look. Everyone have to have to look young. If you want to have the good look and good, uh, you don't want to look older faster. So. Now from starting from today, you can have a good sleep, at least sleep for seven to eight hours. And sleep may be uh, able to improve your memory deficit, which is one of the age related dementia and Alzheimer's disease. So this sleep will also improve the memory and this will also delay the progression of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. So these two are significant interrelated. And sleep problem, will also call the premature aging of your skin. Like if you are in the 30s, you look like a 45. If you are in age of the 40s, you look like a 60. Because of sleep, loss of sleep, it will look like a, you are becoming your older faster. Another thing that sleep loss also affect your immune system. In earlier, I mentioned that it will, uh, when we are in the deep sleep, our body powers are restored. So one of the power is the immune system. Like our immune system are re restored, our immune system are refreshed to have the fight against the new diseases, infection disease or vi viral. Sleep deprivation wears down your immune system. And if your immune system is lower down, it will make you more difficult for your body to fight against virus and disease.
Now you can see that now in the during the current situation of COVID pandemic, most of the healthcare provider, the doctor, they recommend to have the good sleep. So have the rest, have a good sleep, because that sleep will restore your immune system. So your body will fight against that the disease. They will fight against that infection disease or virus. Now you can see after only a single night or four hours of sleep restriction. So there is a 70% drop in your natural killer cells. So natural killer cells, the immune cell, which are responsible to protect your body against the uh, uh, antigen, against the foreign bodies, including the cancer cells. The WHO, they said that there is a significant correlation between the lack of sleep and cancer is now so strong. The World Health Organization has classified that any form of the night shift, so any form of the night shift or night work as a carcinogenic, it means that any uh, people who are working in the night shift, there is a probability of risk of the carcinogenic, risk of the cancer. Why? What is the reason? The because of the disruption of your sleep, wake rhythm. Because our body, our body has a natural rhythm, circadian rhythm. So which will give the mind when there is a night, they will send that it's time to sleep now. When there is a day, it will send the message to the brain, it is time to wake up now. So if we do, if we go against the nature, if we go against the rhythm, it will affect you. And one of the reasons they have mentioned is proven a strong significant relation that is a carcinogen. Sleep loss and genes. Now see that so sleep restriction of just two hours off per night. Like total is recommended the eight hours. But if you are having only a six hours of night, uh, six hours of sleep per night for one week, it will change the activity of seven one one genes. So there are so many genes our in our body. So one of the genes they have identified that seven one one genes which will be affected if you have the restriction of two hours of sleep, like you are sleeping six hours per night for one week, the activity of 7-1-1 genes will be changed. So now we'll see what is the responsibility of these 7-1-1 genes. All the, this gene is related to circadian rhythms, and met metabolism, inflammation, and immune response and stress. If this one is affected, our body will become the weak, they, they cannot fight against inflammation, they cannot fight against the immune system and our body cannot manage the stress and our natural internal biological circadian rhythm will be disturbed. Okay, another finding is here, sleep loss and weight gain. So many people they have complained that even I have started the dieting but still my weight is not lost. Why my weight is not lost? One of the reasons the sleep deprivation, the sleep depri depri deprivation caused your body to work against you. Those who sleep less than six hours per night were more likely to gain the weight thirty percent. They were thirty percent more likely to gain weight and they become obese than those with sleeping in six to nine hours. This means that those who are sleeping the less than six hours, they are thirty percent more likely to gain the weight. So what, what is the reason? The reason is these two hormones, leptin and ghrelin. Because of sleep deprivation, the hormones level of these two are disturbed. So leptin hormone, which make you feel full and regulate with fat storage. If this is affected, there is a down regulation of leptin. So your body will cannot differentiate that. It will not full, uh, feel full and it will not regulate the fat properly, fat storage and at the same time, ghrelin, the concentration, the hormone, this hormone, the concentration will increase. This hormone which, which will stimulate your hunger. So this is one of the reasons some people, they said we eat only the little food, but I gain the weight. And one of the factors they said, that some people, they eat, they eat a more, but still they don't get the weight. Because the level of leptin and ghrelin is balanced. They have the properly regulate of the fat storage. And if these two levels are affected, so there is a 30% more likely you will gain the weight 
as compared to those, those people who are having a sleep of six to nine hours per night. Okay, second reason, just now that's, that's for all about the sleep loss affect the every system of the body. Now the shorter the sleep, shorter the life. The sleep deprivation, shorter your life expectancy. And sleep deprivation is a contributing factor to death for particular age group, regardless of the cause of death itself. So during my literature, I have found that the, the older people who are born in 1940s and 50s, their life expectancy is high as compared to the people who are born in uh, 2019 90s or 80s so then i thought that my review they have have some some the conclusion that one of the reason is shorter sleep just now just now they have come up the data from the world statistic that on average we spend only the 6.8 hours so none of the country who is spending the eight hours of sleep in 1940s, in 1942, eight hours was the normal. So every individual, they spend eight hours of sleep. Like shorter the sleep, shorter your life expectancy and increase your risk of morbidity and mortality and influence your quality of life. Sleep is your life support system. Getting more sleep make you health, healthier. So this is one of the, one of the, natural system to improve many many health or many uh, lifestyle modification we can say that if, if lifestyle modification have a good sleep first maybe after having a good sleep or so like eight hours of sleep many of your stress or uh, the factor which are contributing your weight gain your immune system your cardiovascular maybe it will improve now we see the health issue the insufficient sleep has been linked to the lack of stress management skill. Like we'll be having a lacking in man management our own stress and manage how to have the other work. If we cannot manage, it will increase our stress. It will also increase the risk of cold and infection. It will increase the occupational and traffic accident. It will increase the risk of chronic disease and it will heighten the levels of negative emotion states such as depression, anger, sadness, and fear. It will increase your negative emotions that everything, every time you will think about the negative, every time you think about the, you, you will feel that you have the depression. You, your mood will be, uh, what we say, short temper mood. You will get the angry and very short, uh, simple things you will be sad and you will be having a fear. Now we see the effect on children. That, that's the reason the Sleep Foundation, they have given the recommendation, recommendation for toddlers, the children, adolescent, teenager, and young adults. The research have suggested that sleep is more critical for adolescents. Like as their bodies, and brain are experienced the rapid growth and development because the adolescent that is the age where their brains where their body are in a growth rapid growth and development for that rapid growth and development they need to sleep and it's very critical for them to have the good de brain development and growth so it, it is also proven that lack of sleep in developing children have demonstrated the deficient in cognition and deficient in working memory and attention. So the children who have a good sleep, they having a good IQ level, they have a good memory, they have a good cognition attention as compared to the children who having a less sleep. So this is one of the factor of having their performance in academic. Now you see the effect of sleep deprivation on the university students college students and university students. So that's why when, whenever I going to, whenever I deliver the lectures to my students, before starting the lecture, I ask from my students, anyone feeling sleepy? 
because I know that if anyone is feeling the sleepy, if I give the lecture, there is no point. They cannot understand. They cannot absorb the what I am teaching. Maybe physically they will be here. Mentally they cannot be. Especially the more crucial time, the lecture at the morning time, eight o'clock, and the lecture at one thirty. Morning that because of them not having a good enough sleep, they will feel the sleepiness in the next day. And the second one thirty, the after the lunch, there is a. Uh, having a laziness that because after he having a he heavy lunch or food you start having a laziness and sleepiness the sleep deprivation and poor sleep quality are particularly po prominent in young adults and college students so this research shows that there is a relationship between the poor sleep quality and lower academic performance this means that those who are having a poor sleep those who are not having a good enough sleep and quality of sleep, their academic performance is low as compared to the those which having a good uh, sleep. Now we see the effect on the shift workers, those who are working in a shift. Like some, sometimes they have the morning shift, sometimes they have the night shift. We could just now mention our uh, body, our natural internal system, circadian rhythms. They have one rhythm. So that rhythm is about that. That has an impact on the light, impact of light on our brain. When they say night, our brain will send the message to hypothalamus that it's time to sleep and get tired. And when it says day, our brain send the message to our hypothalamus. He say day, now it's time to active. And if you not have enough sleep, that rhythm will be disturbed. The shift worker reduces the both the quality and quantity of sleep. And sleepy individuals are less ambitious and less productive. And the sleep loss impairs the performance on cognitive tasks like memory, learning, and logical reason. And there is also the research proven that those who are having a less sleep and sleep deprivation, they have given some mathematical calculations. And those who having a deprivation, sleep deprivation, they could not able to do that mathematical calculation as compared to those who having a good enough quality of sleep. Okay, here I have to highlight that shift workers. Now we see that during the current COVID crisis, our healthcare providers, they are working in a shift. Some are working continuously day and night. They are working to take care of your health. They are working sleepless night, and they are sacrificing their sleep to well-being of the nation. And they are working to taking, taking care of your health. Now, during this current crisis, is emphasized that how the healthcare providers, the doctors, pharmacists, and nurses are very important for the nations, which help and improve the well-being of the people and nation of the country. Now see, they have given that some nurses that they are working day and night, they are sac sacrificing their sleep, some having a stress, some having a stress about their loved one, some having a stress about their family member, someone they haven't met their kids for three and four days. So here I would appreciate, here I would say that thank you to all front clients, liners for all your sacrifice. So may God give you to bless and bless you and protect you. So we should appreciate, we should uh, applause for them that they are sacrificing their sleep for the well-being of the nation. And I'm probably informed that this, the pharmacist course, doctor course and nurses, they all are offered in my university, in the Masa University. So which is nowadays emphasized, beside that, the medical staff, the lab staff is also very important for the for every nation. Okay, let's begin and move to our relationship between the sleep and mental health. If you're not having a sleep, good sleep, sleep problem, the one of the most common sleep problem is insomnia. So followed by narcolepsy. So insomnia is the most common sleep problem and are commonly experienced by uh, experienced
by those with having a mood and anxiety disorder. Now these are interrelated to each other. So insomnia can be either a risk factor or symptoms of mental health condition. Like insomnia can cause the mental health condition or mental health condition can cause the insomnia. They are interrelated and once either or one affect the mental health or this one, it will cause a sleep disturbance. And the sleep disturbance, it will exacerbate your mental health, exacerbate your anxiety, exacerbate your stress. Sometimes the treating insomnia can improve the symptoms of mood anxiety. And sometimes treating the mood anxiety, we can treat the insomnia. So sometimes before we begin to start having a antipsychotic medicine for the anxiety, depression, and mood. So I, rec I recommend to my patient, to my those who take the suggestion, the counseling, I suggest that before you begin to start any antipsychotic drugs, first you start having a good sleep. If you start having a good sleep, at least eight hours, the quality of sleep is better than the quantity of sleep. So these are the two different things, the quality of sleep and quantity of sleep. So here I have the nine ways to improve your sleep quality. How you can improve your sleep quality. The first thing that sleep in a dark room. And if it is recommended to some activity, the walk, if you can do the walk daily and do some the minor exercise, uh, my, uh, physical exertion, the physical activity, read before the bed. Because sometimes if you read before the pre, uh, before the bed, yeah, it will time it will ease for you to have the sleep earlier. And mediate daily, like do some mediation, the yoga or like the relaxing sleep technique. So do this one. Number five, exercise regularly. Do some exercise. Number six, tips to improve your good sleep quality is limit your caffeine intake. Those who are the coffee lover or tea lover, maybe if they are, you are having a high intake of caffeine, just reduce that one. And have a hot bath because the hot bath will relax your muscles. And before you sleep, if you have your hot bath, it will reduce uh, fall in body temperature, rise and fall in body temperature, and it will uh, promote you a good sleep. And uh, fill up on magnesium and zinc diet. So make the study have suggestion that people who have the magnesium zinc can improve the sleep quality. So now, now the thing is, which food have the magnesium and zinc? That is an dried nuts, almonds, pumpkin seeds, or nuts. So these are the food which having a magnesium. And the which food which having a zinc, that is a protein which is rich in a protein rich food like the beef, cheese, lamb and peanuts. So meaning that uh, add up this food in your life uh, daily, uh, in your daily routine and make time to sleep. Like make a fixed time that maybe if you have fixed a time 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock I have to sleep and the morning I have to wake up at the same time is six o'clock seven o'clock so whether it is a weekend whether it is a public holiday you just make a time to sleep and follow that sleep pattern every day same whether it is a public holiday whether it is a is a weekend just follow that make sleep on the same time wake up on the same time so general tip general tips for having a healthy sleep that Go to bed and wake up at the same time every day. So this is the one of the good pattern to follow the good sleep pattern and improve your quality of sleep. Just now I mentioned avoid caffeine consumption, especially before the bed. And expose yourself to bright light in the morning because it will help us. The light, just now I mentioned the light have impact on the uh, effect on the biological clock that is circadian rhythms so it will help us to reset that one if you see that newborn baby when they are born they 
their uh, circadian rhythms are not developed they don't know when is the day when is the night so either we have to build it that we have to expose the kids to the uh, sunlight when they will sleep the kids with uh, sleep make the kids sleep in the dark so automatically their body will start realizing that this is the night time this is the day time make sure your bedroom is conductive to sleep it should be the dark quiet comfortable and cool even very hot weather also you cannot sleep even very cool uh, temperature also you cannot you cannot sleep another tip is sleep on comfortable mattress and pillow and don't go to the bed feeling hungry so another thing is the first thing that don't have the overeating just have a light meal if you go to the bed feeling hungry maybe you will try to sleep but your hormones will will aggravate that you are feeling hungry develop develop a relaxing routine like bathing take the hot bath music uh, just have a light music before and reading reserve your bedroom for sleeping only this is one of the factor that don't keep cell phone computers tv and video games uh, in your bedroom keep all this out of your bedroom because if you have the cell phone definitely whenever there is a vibration whenever there is a phone suddenly you will pick your phone and you will check okay what's the message what's this it will affect your sleep so this is a general tips to have a good sleep hygiene exercise regularly just now i mentioned during the day and don't have the pets in your bedroom because it will disturb it will disturb your sleep whether it is a form of noise whether it is a physical disruption disruption so in conclusion i have said that sleep is not an optional lifestyle luxury sleep is a non negotiable biological necessity it is necessary for our good health it is necessary for our well being and it is necessary for the having a good quality of life and to perform the function for the next day so it's not the optional like no, maybe today i'll sleep tomorrow uh, tomorrow i'll not sleep or maybe today i'll sleep more tomorrow i'll not sleep so that's not the optional the dissemination uh, dissemination of sleep in industrialized nation is a silent sleep loss epidemic so that is becoming a one of the greatest public health challenge we face in the 21st century like every nation which is a becoming a developing nation industrialized nation there is a silent sleep loss epidemic the people are losing their sleep the people are losing their quality of sleep and this is one of the greatest public health challenge that we were facing in 21st century if they are losing the sleep now you can see what are the different effects effects on your reproductive system effects on your brain effect on your uh, cardiovascular system effect on your metabolic system effect on your uh, what's it circadian rhythms so here i have some recommendation that if someone want to have the read the book about to unlock the power of sleep and dreams so the recommendation is why we sleep so this is a very good book this is a proactive new vision for the sleep in the modern world and it is written by the matthew uh, matthew walker the show form we call as a math walker so matthew walker is one of the best seller books is the author of this uh, this book and this is good to work to read it so at the end i will say if you are not getting enough sleep you are killing yourself if you not you are making yourself making your health spoil you are killing yourself so thank you for all and thank you for your attention so at the end i will say sleep is my superpower so now we'll move toward question and session uh, q a session so i will switch back to the miss jennifer uh thank you mr kamar that was uh, indeed a very insightful 
uh, topic. Yes, uh, sleep has always been to many our superpower, but unfortunately, these days, uh, for some, it is indeed a luxury to get enough hours of sleep, right? Yeah, um, you mentioned quite a lot of interesting um, uh, angles to consider why this is an important uh, part of our daily routine. Huh? Daily routine. Yes. Good for your health, good for your well-being. Correct. And we cannot take it for granted that if we sleep a few yeah. hours a day, then we can accumulate the hours the next day and still feel fresh and fine. So, but, you know, the lately, um, not lately, actually, a couple of years back, uh, Business Insider came out with their 11 uh, successful uh, people, people. Uh, yeah. high-profile people who had very little sleep yet they were successful to achieve the achievements they've had. So how is that? I mean, is that supposed to be a motivator to people to think that uh, with very little sleep, I can accomplish more? Because here we have Barack Obama, we have people like, um, you know, the CEO of uh, A AOL, uh, with very little sleep, yet being very successful. So should we look at that as a plus point to think that, we too should be considering four hours of sleep and more hours okay. of productivity. Regarding that, regarding that, we know that we don't know the personal life of their successful people. We only see how they get successful. They work hard. Uh, maybe they have a good sleep. They work hard. They work dedication. They have the motivation. So they have the goal. But does it mention in that one they have the loss of sleep? Oh, yes. They, it is. The highlight of the article basically is saying that they've only had four hours to six hours of sleep. But, you know, that's that's my point. I mean, what I'm asking you, are people supposed to look at articles like this and think that it's a motivation for them to have a little bit of sleep? Or should they really consider the fact that a balanced lifestyle is seriously the best thing to do? It could be the motivation in the sense that if you're having a less sleep, Maybe for the current scenario, you can achieve something, but the long term is not good. I will not recommend the long term having a sleep deprivation is not good. Maybe during that successful, they follow the sleep loss. So once they achieve their goal, once they become successful, they have to continue back to their good quality of sleep because they have achieved their goal. They have uh, because they have worked hard to achieve their goal. They sacrifice the sleep. Now you can see. Uh, I, here I also hi highlighted the healthcare providers that they are working the day and night. They are working very hard. They have spending the night, the sleepless night. Yeah. So they are also having sacrificing the sleep. So sleep is a long term process. Is if we, we have sleep deprivation like for one day or two days, it it will not show effect on this very very next day. It's a long term. So it's if we long -term. have effect, effect on. The long term, maybe in the future, you will be having a some cardiovascular disorder. Maybe you are having some dementia or Alzheimer earlier than the other people who having sleep good, good enough sleep. Okay, so there is someone here by the name of Asfa Rizal Abdullah. Okay, what about people with anxiety disorder who are suffering from insomnia, although they have consumed alp alprozolam to help because them. I but to stay asleep is difficult. So what do you have to answer to this? Okay. Regarding this question, as, uh, as Feru, uh, Fai, as Fai, 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 if I pronounce the wrong name, actually the anxiety and insomnia are interrelated with each other. The anxiety can lead to the insomnia and insomnia can lead to the anxiety. Okay. And the one you have mentioning that the Alprazolam, Alprazolam is a benzodiazepine which will cause the addiction. For example, if you have started the Alprazolam with a 0 0.25, so after one week, your body needs the more Alprazolam. 0 0.25 is not enough. This means that when you have the 0 0.50, then it will affect, then you will uh, start the sleep, you will have the sleep. After one week, two weeks, the 0 0.50 will also not enough. Even if you are taking 0 0.5, you will not get to sleep because now your body is addicted to have 0 0.50 and now you have to have the more. So this is the problem in these sleep, sleeping pills that it will cause the addiction and you are bound to increase the dose. Just now he mentioned that even after they consume Alprazolam to help them to sleep but to stay asleep is difficult. 
so that's the reason because our body become addicted so that dose is not enough we have to increase the dose and these two conditions anxiety insomnia are interrelated maybe if we have the good uh, sleep then the anxiety can be cured or if we have the anxiety if mental disorder anxiety is cured we can have the cure from the insomnia okay uh, thank you for that question as for result i hope you got your answer um, i've got um, i've got another question i mean what if uh, we've worked the whole week doing a work week and then we've had very little sleep so and we have the weekend you did mention that some people yeah. get gain back their sleep uh, during the weekend does mm. it actually help i mean like a polar bear going into hibernation i mean does it help to hibernate over the weekend does it actually revive your vitality for whatever you've lost during the week okay it will help your health but it will not revitalize which you have lost mm -hmm. if you have lost that that becomes the loss forever if you have a sleep loss for one hour in a week uh, weekdays it's that loss, loss cannot be recovered back but if you having a good sleep quality of sleep in weekend it will improve your health it will prevent which is the some deprivation is it can overcome but that loss cannot be overcome Okay. That loss is loss. Loss is loss. Yeah. Time loss. Time loss. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think we have any other questions. Uh, so uh, we've got a survey form that is available for our viewers to fill in. Uh, we would like to know from our audience what other topics you'd like to have, especially from the Faculty of Pharmacy, because there are more coming up next month and the following mm -hmm. month with really interesting uh, subjects. So um, to our, okay, there's one that just came in. Uh, hang on, huh? Pon Mala. Hi, sir, when go to bed, felt headache always and only able to sleep four to five hours per day. How can I improve on this situation? Okay, okay. Pon Mala, the headache is very general symptoms. There are so many reasons of having a headache, like less sleep. That is also one of the factor. If patient, if a person having a gastric problem, that is also one of the issue. If patient, uh, sorry, I will tell to say, if the person having a heavy meal before the bedtime, that is also one of the reason. So there are so many reasons. First of all, we have to you have to identify what is the reason of having a headache. Okay, because. Uh, uh, painkiller is not the solution every day you will take the painkiller headache cure you sleep next day again you will take the painkiller headache relief you sleep so now it's up to you that you have to identify so what is the reason behind the headache so maybe i will suggest you first you try to have the good quality of sleep and then you have the if you still cannot manage the pain because sometimes the pain it will affect the quality of life and you cannot sleep it I agree with that point and then try to have the painkiller then you have to identify your reason what is the pain, uh, reason of having a headache even one more thing if you're having an eyesight problem it will also get the headache if you're having a deficiency of lutein and zeotin so that is a hormone which is in the eye which are responsible for the color color differentiate and which is responsible for the focus and uh, if the deficiency of diet hormones that, that that is also cause the headache so there are so many reasons that you have to work on yourself to identify that headache so we treat that problem first then your headache will be cured and you will have a good quality of sleep okay thank you pon mala for your question i hope that answers uh, and um, i guess uh, we've come to the end of our webinar okay so i wish so I wish everyone the good health. So I pray they stay healthy, stay blessed. And I hope everyone have the good quality of sleep from now onwards. Yes, we hope so too. I hope <laughs> thank so. you very much. Come on, thank you to our audience for your time. Yes. Uh, catch you all in the next, uh, next show. Uh, till then, sleep well and take care.
Okay, thank you.